so there are a lot fewer two-parent families. What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? Almost nobody gets out of love alive. Prisoners' rights is out of sight, out of mind. Is your brain on God? You ain't ready to approach their discussions ever. How they thought I love them. Them. Yeah, yeah, to have them. Them. What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? Sensical approach to issues through complex conversation. I am your host, G. Cleave, and I'm with my man always, DB. DB, say what's up to the people, brother. What's going on, people? How y'all feel? Yeah, indeed. And of course, you know, we got my man, third time's a charm, my man, Ray. Ray, go ahead and reintroduce yourself to the people, brother. I'm back. Third time's a charm, third wheel. Third wheel. Let's go. Well, how you guys doing this morning overall? God is no good. Worries. Feeling good. Well, hopefully, because we got a good conversation going on. So, uh, folks, this weekend, Marvel's uh, next installment for their throwbacks to their comic book heroes through movie, Black Panther. Uh, for the last year um, or so, the craze going around Black Panther has been, you know, enormous, as you can see through uh, this past weekend, um, breaking box office numbers and stuff. Um, but, of course, you know, with all of that positivity... And all of that fanfare is a segment of the population that feels like this movie was a complete slap in the face to the descendants of slaves. And I have a gentleman right here in Ray who feels that way. Let me give him an opportunity to explain why. Ray, go ahead and tell the people why you feel like this was such a slap in the face to the descendants of slaves. Well, to begin with, um, I'm the type of person, I consider myself a label reader. I like to know what's in the food I'm eating. And it's the same thing with ideas. I want to know what's in the ideas that my mind is eating. So I wanted to go back and try to understand how, who, and when this character, Black Panther, was framed. When was it designed? So I found a direct quote from Stan Lee. I think this quote comes from about 2005. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But let me just give it to you. Quote, it was a strange coincidence because at the time I did the Black Panther, there was a political party in the country, mostly black people, and they were called the Black Panthers. And I didn't think of that at all. Did you hear that? I didn't think of that at all. Mm. It had nothing to do with our character, although a lot of people thought there was some tie-in let me say that again. It, meaning the Black Panther Party, had nothing to do with our character. Although a lot of people thought there was some tie-in, and I was really sorry. Maybe if I had it to do over again, I'd have given him another name because I hate that confusion to be caused but it really had nothing to do with the then existing Black Panther Party. So what is that saying to us, unquote? So what is that saying to me? It's saying to me that your struggle meant nothing at the inception of this character. So fast forward, what are you doing today tying your struggle into this character? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I have to ask the question. Now, let's just go back maybe a year before the creation of this character. Lowndes, L-O-W-N-D-E-S, County, Alabama. The descendants of slaves were organizing for political power. Under the leadership of then Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Tue, they formed the Lowndes County Freedom Organization. Mm. The Lowndes, L-O-W-N-D-E-S, County Freedom Organization, they chose their symbol to be a Black Panther, 1965. Why did they choose the Black Panther? They chose the Black Panther because it's a symbol of strength and power. They chose that to juxtapose it against the white supremacist Democratic Party had a symbol, it was a white rooster. 
So the, Lowe, the literature for the Lowndes County Freedom Organization had a Black Panther juxtaposed by a white rooster. Now, this is 1965, Lowndes County, Alabama. Kwame Toure, Stokely Carmichael, goes from Lowndes County, Alabama the following year, October 1966. He gives a speech out at Berkeley. In attendance in the audience was Huey Newton and I think one of the other founders of the Black Panther Party. But they hadn't formed yet. They listened to Huey, they listened to Kwame Toure and they said, wait a minute, we need to bring that out here. So the Lowndes County Freedom Organization ended up influencing and being the responsible for the development of the Black Panther Party that we know of, Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, October 1966. In between the two, Stan Lee draws this character, but he just straightened it out. It had nothing to do with your struggle. That's the background, which is, leads me to ask myself later on, okay, what's the craze about? He wasn't talking to you. Those are just my opening thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so then before I run the Dane, let me ask um, you this question. So are you saying that the whole craze about the Black Panda, as far as Black people are concerned, you say it wasn't necessary? It wasn't necessary to have that craze, even though the film was you know, a lot of, you know, black stars and things of that nature. And the idea of the story, the way that Stan Lee saw it, it was an, a, a positive depiction of melanated people. So what I'm asking you is, um, people shouldn't have just had a craze because of that situation? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Before, yeah, because I'm, yeah. Yeah, the question I'm asking is, and I have an answer, but the question I'm asking is, why are we in such a rush to insert ourselves into a figure mm -hmm. that wasn't even talking to us? Mm -hmm. He, when he drew, when he drew the Black Panther, he fictionalized, as you're supposed to do, it's a comic book. Mm -hmm. He fictionalized an African setting. We're here in America now. He completely. He was a he was a continent and thousands of miles away from this experience. So my question for us, and I know the answer, or at least I know, I'm I'm satisfied to have an answer. Mm -hmm. Why are we applauding a character, as the movie points out, who is not only not from our experience, but went on to kill the character? who represents our experience. Gotcha. That's what I'm asking. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay, so now, Dane, let's bring it over to you. I'm pretty sure you have seen the film and you have an opinion on it. So here's your time. Go ahead, explain to me, what do you think about overall the, the movie Black Panther? I mean, overall, I, I, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed it for the ideas. Um, I enjoyed it because, you know, a lot of it, which actually I, I, I agree with Ray, a lot of it, focuses on Africa and it focuses on African Americans. But in, in a bigger picture, I think it also intersects with this idea about pan Africanism and about the the connection in between all of us, which um I think is good in some ways. And I and I and I realize that a lot of it, um a lot of that though, I don't know if, if it goes on along with the craze. I think the craze is more about the representation of just having a whole cast of black people and and, and being tied into Africa. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of bigger ideas in there when it comes to um, revolutionaries, when it comes to imperialism, um, when it comes to just open up a discussion of, of uh, us black as a race or ethnicity, ethnicity more than a race and about our future mm -hmm. and the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so then um, let me ask um, the question about the slap in the face mm. for the sentence of slaves. Um, do you agree with that sentiment? 
So the argument I hear a lot is about the fact of why is Killmonger, which I don't know if anybody has ever seen the film, is an African American character in the film who pretty much wants, um, who wants to help his people, who wants to help impoverished people out the world by basically using the technology within this fictional African place, Wakanda, which is highly, which as as is highly resourced, self-sustained, and taking all of that, give them the weaponry so they could. Uh, come up and, and change the whole power structure. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people found a problem with the fact that that is the, the villain, right? Just taking the term villain for what it is. Um, the thing I started coming to realize, first of all, is that a lot of people actually started responding and, and, and gravitating more to Killmonger than to actual... T'Challa or Black Panther, whatever you want to call him. Mm -hmm. And it kind of made me wonder if it even matters if he's called a villain or not. It kind of makes me wonder if, um, especially when I think about the fact of how people root for the underdog, people kind of, a lot of times, root for the bad guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, our culture, we tend to root for bad guys that's not about us, like right. Scarface right. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, Godfather and all these other people that have somebody who represents us and still root for them right. um, and, and, and deal with those ideas. Um, I, I, I don't know if I find it a slap in the face. I think I, I would, I would definitely would have liked a different outcome, mm -hmm. but I think um, a lot of the statement that it makes is powerful. Okay. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the outcome. So let me just put this to claim this claim out here. Now there are going to be some spoilers because we have to get into this film in order for mm -hmm. us to really talk about it. So, um, the ending of the movie mm. where Black Panther is now back in America and he's looking to change some things in that neighborhood. What part of that ending do you have an issue with? Or if, or whether you do or not, because if you have an issue with the ending, that's the part in the end that I, I was really focused on. I would like to get your take on that. Me personally, or yes, uh, me. Uh, right. uh, dang, dang. I'm sorry, dang. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, the ending I was I was originally talking about was um the killing of Killmonger. But okay, if I had to focus on that, um, and and I'm kind of glad you brought it up because I, I kind of maybe want to circle back to your question. Um, one of the things I was thinking about originally with Killmonger and the whole idea of, you know, having a a country, a powerful country, um, supply weapons, and 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 resources to another country, something that has been done. That that is kind of the whole the whole idea of imperialism in a nutshell. When you think about America and, and you know how they they treated South America, um, with the, especially with the CIA and creating this war on drugs. And when you think about um, places in Cuba, you think about places in the Middle East, where you know that is a deeper topic that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but what the movie decided, which I think is what a, a lot, creates a lot of problem, is that okay, that's not the route to go, even though there's some things to, to actually be taken from from that. The way to go is to do it diplomatically. The way to go is to, to try to help these people, try to use those resources, um, but it does that by killing the people who actually wanted to help the people in the first place, by killing the revolutionaries who were saying you need to help us in the first place, mm -hmm. so that you need somebody uh, in the power structure to actually do it, and, and you cannot do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where some of that problem falls in, into place. So, it falls into, you know, it's not about the individual. You, you're supposed to look up to this person and not do it by yourself. So, okay, so uh, just so I'm clear, do you disagree with them uh, <laughs> with the idea of the African country now bringing resources to this impoverished community and trying to rebuild it up? Whether it be as a um, a gesture, an apology for what happened to Killmonger, and even in the past with his father, mm -hmm. do you have an issue with that type of a gesture? The 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 gesture itself, I cannot say I have a problem with. You know, I guess we gotta wait for a sequel to see how that go. Okay. But you know, just when you take it in the whole nutshell of the movie, then you know, they're they're. they're there is some things to, to, you know, explore a little bit more that, that I think 
I, I don't even want to say damaging. I really just want to keep it at, at exploration because it's, mm -hmm. it's a movie. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, it's a movie and it's ideas. It's the ideas within the movie that I want I want to crack a little right. bit more than, right. than that. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. As far as helping and impoverished people, no. Um, but to be honest, if I want to even take the movie by itself, that was more about guilt to me than actually helping the people. It was about him feeling bad that his father got killed by by the other person's father and, and he's going to make up for it in this way. Right, right. That's what that seemed like to me more well, than anything else. Interesting, because that's a good word, guilt. Guilt. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to bring it back to you, Ray, because now I'm going to give you another opportunity to go ahead and elaborate a little bit more about specifics in the movie, things that you saw that um, brought you to the conclusion that you think it was a slap in the face of the descent of the slaves. Give me something specific, you know, interaction in the movie or something that uh, led you to feel that way. Okay. Uh, first, let me just tag on to what he was talking about, the ending. Okay. Wanted to come over and make this investment. My problem with that is, first and foremost, um, I'm having an issue with these fantasies and how these fantasies kill our ability to think rationally. I have no problem with them, but the human imagination. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. We need that imagination. We need people who can see more than what there is right now. But the idea these runaway fantasies are killing us. At maybe one of the, if maybe the most serious time in our life, we're looking at next year marks 400 years since we've been here. Next year, officially 400 years. This is no time for fantasies. This is the time to, to evaluate and reassess where we are right now. How much progress have we made? How much progress have we lost? Fantasies like that, ain't nobody checking for you. I mean, people need to understand that. You come from the slaves on these plantations. Nobody's checking for you. Gotcha. No one's coming to ch check for you. That's number one. Number two, my problem with that donation is that it reinforces the stereotype of us as a charity case. I don't need Wakanda bringing me nothing. I have a 400-year-old justice claim that's still unsettled in this country. What kind ain't going to fix this? Politics is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know this is only a movie. Yeah. I know this is only a comic book. For those of you who right now are thinking, oh, this is too serious. Listen, let me explain something to you. Don't tell me it's only a comic book. Tell yourself that. You know why? Because Wakanda, I'll be willing to bet you, Wakanda is going to end up in your politics. Wakanda is going to end up in somebody's politics. In what way? In what way do you mean that it would end up in politics? Interesting. Interesting. These fantasies, these fantasies are now stimulated in the minds of many of us. Somebody, write this date down. What time is it? 19. You heard it here. Here's what's going to happen. Somebody from that movie is going to end up alongside a political candidate that's going to be marketed at the descendants of slaves, and we're going to bite it. Walk my word. They know how to get you. It, it works every time. It works every time, and they're going to do it again. I'm, I see, I can smell a move coming. One of these, somebody, Wakanda is going to end up in the middle of your politics, and you're going to rally around it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so now, do you think, okay, so now, um, are you taking issue with, you know, the, the the black people that are, you know, getting so involved in this movie? Or are you taking an issue with Hollywood for even attempting to create something that would, would you know, I guess, lead descendants of slaves to be jumping into this type of pool? Like, that's, that's where I'm trying to kind of figure out where you're going with that. Like, it, you think this was a plan, especially when you start talking about seeing this in you know, policy later, you know? Do you think that this is a well-thought-out, well-thought-out situation? We're going to plant this here with the hope that later on it turns into what you're describing later. You know what? I can't even say that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't. Honestly, I do not know. Mm -hmm. um, I can say 
and I'm not I'm not getting into this uh this YouTube um this YouTube uh, beefs, but I have to question how the writer sees his people. I have to question that. Why image your people? Why frame your people like this? You take you take Killmonger, who represents the next level of our struggle. Mm -hmm. Figuratively now, this is only a movie. But he represents us. His father has a line that goes back to Wakanda. His mother is some mysterious woman who's descended from slaves, obviously. Mm -hmm. Grew up in Oakland. Mm -hmm. So now, which is also symbolic because of the Oakland Panthers. So now, mm -hmm. I just lost my train of thought that quick. Okay. Um... Somebody recap for me my, so, my, my Okay, so um basically they, about why why they would frame um right why frame your people frame Killmonger. Yeah. Right, right. Now why frame the aspirations of your people like this? So okay, look. <clears throat> the scene where Killmonger is having a conversation with Lupita Nyongo. And she says to him, I'll never forget those words are burned into my brain. You are a black American. Mm. I said, whoa. My wife sitting next to me. I said, did you hear that? She was like, calm down. I said, okay, I'm going to wait. You're a <laughs> black American. I'm going to wait. Kept wait. reinforcing it and then kept reinforcing the, 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 the language. There's an outsider on the throne. There's an outsider on the throne. That's talking about you and you. It's talking about me. So that means my great great grandmother, my great 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 grandmother, all of them got a slap. I don't like it personally. I'm not feeling it. Mm. Mm. I'm not feeling it. So maybe for, for some of us, that story back there in those years, maybe that's remote. I'm not allowed, like I said before, I'm not allowed to keep that, you know, to, to I'm not allowed to, for that to be remote and I'm getting upset right now. Okay, so so let me ask you, okay, you know what, this is, this is, okay, so no, no, Dane, no. so so now Dane, let me ask this question, man. Um, mm -hmm. You see, you, you see where, 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 where Ray is at with this situation here. Um, mm -hmm. Are you in line with what he's saying? I am, but I, I kind of maybe am taking the opposite um, well, I'm taking opposite emotions from it, mm -hmm. and the fact, well, maybe I'm not even that emotional, because because Ray look like he's about to punch a screen. Mm. But mm. I, um, like, yeah. I, I think that's kind of maybe, and I'm not going to speak for the writer, um, Ryan Coogler, or or the other guy that that co-wrote it. Um, but I know when I, I have seen the responses, and and I, I know from not necessarily my own experiences, but hearing a lot of stuff growing up. That um that is kind of how a lot of Black Americans feel. Like they might feel outside of Africa. They feel like their, their homeland is different, and and a lot of that is we chasing into it. Which is why I talk about this idea of Pan Africanism, about still trying to go back to to where we originally came from, trying to find that culture and bring it back to us, and still being on the outside of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I I take those same notes. I take those same exact notes, but to me it's more a reflection of how we feel. Mm -hmm. um how it plays off so when 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 he's talking about that scene um it, it is powerful i think that's probably you know up to whoever is watching how you interpret it but i i i i i, I believe it i believe that you you know in some ways you're always going to be seen as an outsider mm -hmm. regardless of your, your skin color regardless of knowing what the history is knowing that we was taken away like me specifically um, I'm Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So there, there was even another separate tie there. And I'm not even as, as tied to, to my Caribbean side as much as the American side because I was raised here. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a lot of, of that, those different factions that, you know, the dysphoria is, is always, always kind of split, which is kind of what, what I enjoy about the movie is that even if it explored it in, in, a, in a roundabout way, it, it's still... Mm -hmm opened up a little bit of that conversation. Because especially when I look at certain, because I was reading a lot of 
reviews prior to this. Mm -hmm. um, and there's quite a few people that are watching in Africa. And their reaction in Africa, I mean, they still had the fanfare, but the, the, the way they took in certain parts of that film, of course, is way different from us because it's a matter of the frame of reference. Right. So it's a matter of when they see certain things. Like I, I just read one recently about when um, Killmonger was in, in uh, the museum right. and he was talking about the, the mask. Like they actually cheered out the mask because he was actually nodding to a real part of history in, in Africa that I never caught. You know what I mean? I know the overall history, but I never caught that because I don't know the specifics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really just a matter of interpretation, but I do take those same notes. Good. Okay, so, Ray, so let's, let's, let's ask this question. Since you brought up why would the writer frame his people in this place? So, Ryan Coogler, all right, let's go ahead and talk about what he's done so far. Two other films, um, Fruitvale Station, uh, Creed. Very good movies, in my opinion. Not sure what you guys think about it. Real quick, if you want to say, Fruitvale and Creed, how'd you feel about those uh, those movies? I've never seen either one. I'm not a great movie person. Okay. But when something comes up like this, I got to go see it. Well, I'll say this. Fruitvale Station, I would recommend that one first, since that one was uh, based off of, you know, something that really, really happened. And um, I think he did a real good job at that. But So now, here's where um, I ask this question. Being that you see his history, of the films that he's put out and once you get a chance to follow up on it maybe you'll be able to answer the question a little better my thing would be knowing what he's done in hollywood so far um i would look at this movie and those very same situations that you considered to be like why the hell would he i i am kind of looking at it in the opposite way simply because i don't think anything that he put in that movie anything that was represented is something that I haven't seen before. A lot of this shit is true. The interaction between uh, African born and uh, descendants of slaves here in the United States, the interaction between them, I'm pretty sure if you had, that they, they, there, there is some issue there. So it's not like he didn't, he didn't present something that doesn't exist. It truly did. So I'm kind of looking at it this way. Maybe if there's people out there that's turning a blind eye, let's say African born, individuals here in this country who turn a blind eye to that relationship let me go ahead and put this shit on film so let me go ahead and remind you individuals about what's really going on the relationship between us that that's what i kind of saw so i don't i don't i don't no. i don't i don't go ahead I, because i'm I, I was wondering if you was you know asking that question if you're directing it to like to ryan like why would you frame your people in that way so i mean i was looking at it in terms like i said a different approach but um right i get know. that because that's the only thing that made sense to me okay would been maybe he did it intentionally okay nevertheless i'm still looking at it okay let me give you a little bit more frame the night before my wife had gone to get her eyebrows done I'm like, we going to the movie. I mean, you getting your eyebrows done? She's like, yeah, we're going to see Black Excellence. I'm like, now I'm not on social media. Right. I don't have Facebook. I got no Twitter. Nothing. Right, right. So I'm hearing this Black Excellence. So I'm like, I'm guessing that was trending. That must have been a trending hashtag. Okay. Right. Black Excellence. Well, we're going to see Black Excellence. Now, she's, I've known her almost 30 years. So she's always worn African print. That's nothing new. So it was intentional this time. She going to see Black Excellence, going to wrap up in some African print. My daughter put an African accent on her scarf. The couple that we went with and their daughter, every one of them, some sort of African reference in their attire. And I'm looking, and I'm in the movie theater, and I'm watching the slap from the screen. I said, wait a minute. They got dressed up oh, to come pay homage to this here thing, and I'm like, you just got slapped. And everyone stands up and applauds when Killmonger is murdered. I'm like, wait a minute, that's you. That's you, what are you standing up applauding for? That was you, that was you. And you got dressed up in your finery, and I'm watching people come out with t-shirts on, Wakanda forever, I'm like, you just got this. What are you talking about? Wakanda forever. Listen, this, I came, I'm thinking about two words. Mm -hmm. 
accept and accept. In Wakanda, they accept everybody except you. Is that clear enough? Okay. Um, I hate to cut you off. So you'll have to elaborate a little bit more on that. Who else did they accept? Okay, sorry. I was wrong. They did accept somebody, but go ahead. And but, 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 okay, but this is all going to tell Go ahead. Everyone from their bloodline. Okay, okay. That's what and I, 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 would, I would have one more. I'm sorry, because this is another thing. They they accepted the, the white boy from the CIA, but go ahead. Well, well wait. Going there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, all right, so, so go there. Teamed up with the, with the white... The court. Now, this is Africa, right? This is, you know, Ungawa, black power. But you teamed up with the white boy to kill Killmonger. Are we going somewhere else with this? Okay, and here, listen, I'm a devil's advocate type, type kind of guy. So um, let me present it this way. Um, they did not accept him initially. It wasn't until he saved uh, Lupita's character's life that then... She started to accept, but as you can see, there were still individuals who had those issues. I just wanted to point that part out because when you bring Killmonger into the, the picture, he did nothing in their eyes, right, to gain and, their and trust. If, if, I, if I wanted to add on to Devil's Advocate, I would also say that Killmonger himself was kind of brought in by a Wakandan with the other guy that rode the rhinos um, and accepting him, and he was kind of became his general in, in certain kind of ways. But anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, um, I, it's just that once he, from, from the time he got there, right, from the yeah. time he got there and claimed what he was claiming and they found out what he was, um, there was nothing positive that he had brought to the table in their eyes. Just saying the CIA, he saved Lupita's life and gave them a reason to say, okay, maybe I can trust you. That's, I'm just saying as far as the way that the film was depicted. Yeah.